Hello and welcome to Little Big Physics, a series in which we try to figure out the mechanics of the world of Little Big Planet from the ground up. Last time, we asked ourselves how tall Sackboy was and devised an incredibly accurate way to measure distances in order to answer that question. Today, we're going to ask another question about our sack friend. Sackboy, we're told, is filled with fluff and ice cream, but just how much fluff and how much ice cream? Let's first ask a simpler question. How much does Sackboy weigh? The savvy among you might be saying, shouldn't you be asking what his mass is instead? That's a great thought, but let's not distinguish between the two just yet. Put yourself in the shoes of somebody who truly doesn't have any understanding of physics beyond simple intuition. Something is heavy, or it's light. How heavy is it? Fortunately for us, Little Big Planet does have a built-in system of units for mass, which we might be able to use for this very purpose. I say mass because it's infinity for mobile objects like dark and light matter, even though the game calls it weight. It's tucked away into a really obscure place though for some reason. The tool we need, of all things, is the in-out mover, which moves objects towards or away from the camera. You can set a maximum weight that the mover can push, but that wouldn't be very helpful if you didn't know what anything weighed. For that purpose, it has the attached object's current weight displayed in the tweak menu. Of note is that this number refers to the entire body that the mover is attached to. For example, if the mover is on an object glued to the ground, directly or indirectly, it will be immobile and thus have a weight, more appropriately mass, of infinity. It's good that we have that number, but it's not very precise, only going to one tenth of a unit, and we don't have any reference for how big that number is yet. Worst of all, there's no apparent way to translate this measurement into a signal, so we can't use it in logic in any way. Let's define our own unit instead, the SMAS, or SAC mass, which is exactly equivalent to the heaviness of Sackboy. Let's see if we could feasibly make a block of one SMAS. I'm putting together a simple scale. I'm taking care to make it perfectly symmetrical, so if two objects of equal heaviness are placed on it when it's in the neutral position, it'll stay balanced. This means that we can use the balance to understand whether two objects are as heavy as each other. The joint in the middle has a stiffness of zero, by the way, for maximum sensitivity. Let's see if we can use it to make a block of one smash by simply putting a sack on one end, and we'll use our sack rod assistant for this, and a block on the other, the size of which we'll carefully modify until they're balanced. Now we have a block that we believe to be one smash. If we swap it out with ourselves, Indiana Jones style, we can also see that nothing changes, as expected. This confirms that a sackbot is just as heavy as sackboy, by the way, in case anybody had any concerns about that tainting the data. We can play around a bit more, making different weights, but unfortunately, while this gives us a pretty good approximation of how heavy sackboy is, it's not really as accurate as we'd like. Even with the joint at 0% stiffness, it isn't completely loose, and the two sides only need to be of similar heaviness to be balanced. It also only tells us if two objects are as heavy as each other, and if not, which is heavier, but not by how much. We want a tool that will give us a hard number for arbitrary objects, so we're going to want a better setup. Luckily for us, there's something in Little Big Planet that exhibits the exact kind of behavior we need. It turns out that springs in the game act exactly like ideal springs that obey this equation. This equation basically says that if you pull twice as hard on the spring, by making it hold twice as much for example, the spring will stretch out to twice the length. Thus, if we hang something from a spring, there will be a direct proportion between the heaviness of what we hang from it and how far it stretches. All we have to do then is work out how far a weight of one unit heaviness will make the spring stretch, and we can use that spring as a scale. A spring scale, which is a common type of scale in real life in fact. Now, let's get to our own version. We don't need anything fancy. I'll just hang a platform from a spring connected to a block of light matter, which is completely immobile. I'll put a tag on top of the platform, and a tag sensor on the bottom of the light matter, so that the distance measurement starts and stops in the same places as the spring, since the spring's length is what we're measuring. The tag sensor's minimum range will line up exactly with the length of the spring when nothing's on the platform, getting rid of the inner dead zone issue we talked about in the last episode and we can make the maximum range whatever we want it to be. We'll decide on the best distance for that later. It won't be too long though, and the platform shouldn't be dropping down to the maximum range of the sensor anyways, so we won't worry about the issue of the outer unknown region that we addressed in the last video either. We'll save stiffness for later too. 
the tag sensor will be connected to Fort's signal display, which a member of the Dreamsource forum has helpfully pointed out in his remote community collection called the Creator's Toolkit. To make life just a little easier, I also put an object modifier in the platform's microchip, which makes it completely immobile, and is only activated when a very sensitive speed sensor is tripped, essentially making the platform stop moving as soon as it starts moving. Then, once it's stopped moving, the speed sensor will stop giving a signal, and the platform will be free to move again. This causes the platform to keep stopping itself in place, so that instead of oscillating back and forth forever, it'll slowly approach a stable length, at which point it'll stop moving entirely, making its length very easy to measure. Finally, I also added an anti-grav modifier to the platform, so that its weight won't affect the spring at all. Now all we have to do is calibrate the scale by changing the range of the tag sensor, as well as the length and stiffness of the spring. I decided I wanted one mass to give a reading of 0.01, .01, so I can just multiply the reading by 100 to get the heaviness of the object on the platform in masses. This was accomplished by placing some sackbot assistance on a platform, and making changes to the stiffness and length until it gave a reading of 0.07. Nearly an hour of careful tweaking later, we have a pretty good calibration. Adding one more sackboy to the 7 slowly but surely gives us the measurement we expect of 0 0.08. Unfortunately, this tool isn't quite as precise as one might hope. If we just jostle around the stuff on the platform a bit, we can see that the measurement can actually vary by a couple digits. This error increases drastically as heavier and heavier objects are placed on the scale. At one mass or less, the error is within one hundredth of a mass, making it incredibly accurate. But at about 10 times that, it could be off by as much as 0.2 smasses. Repeated measurements can help alleviate this, thankfully, bringing it back to within hundredths of a smas. An interesting takeaway, though, is that a spring's length when subjected to a particular pull isn't perfectly exact like one might expect. In any case, we now have a way of measuring how heavy things are in the future. What about how heavy Sackboy is, though? As nice and useful as the spring scale is, it actually doesn't tell us anything about how heavy he is, since we used him as our standard. What's the in-out mover say if we put on something just as heavy as Sackboy? That he's just as heavy as Sackboy, apparently. On the right side, an in-out mover gives you heaviness in smasses. But on the other hand, well, what else can we measure? Sure, let's wait this thing. Alright, Sackboy is 1 smas, 1 banana is 2.224 smasses, 1 smas divided by 2.224 smasses per banana is 0.4496 bananas. Sackboy is 0.4496 bananas. Is that good enough? Okay, just for fun, here's my approximation for Sackboy's fluff to ice cream ratio. You can see the numbers I used in the math I did here. I treated Sackboy as a cylinder and took his height from the loading planet Wikia, though this number unfortunately has no source behind it. His radius was an estimate. I got the density of the fluff by dividing the mass of a package of polyester fiber stuffing on Amazon by its volume. I also went ahead and assumed the highest quality of ice cream, since there's no way he'd be filled with the cheap stuff. As you can see, we have an ice cream to fluff ratio of 63 to 1 by volume. By mass, he's almost literally entirely ice cream. So, let it be known that Sackboy is in fact stuffed with very little fluff and almost entirely expensive, high quality ice cream. Unless his fluff is just a lot denser than most kinds. It's probably not very soft in any case. Well, thanks for sticking with me through this episode of Little Big Physics. Next time, we'll finally begin looking at how things move to get a sense of whether the physics of Little Big Planet varies in any meaningful way from that of the real world. Until then, I'm happy as always to hear any suggestions or ideas for how to revisit topics I've already covered, or for any new ones. There's plenty more to learn, and I know I can't figure it out all myself. In any case, see you then, stay curious.